All right, in this video here, we're going to talk about uh, what it means to have a complete graph of a function. Um, so if, if we have a complete graph of a function, it really gives us all the information we need to know about a function um, because, remember, the, uh, the, the points on the graph tell us which input values, the, the x values, correspond to which output values, which are the y values. Right? So if we have the entire graph where we have a complete picture of the graph, it, it basically gives us all the inputs and outputs, so it tells us what's going on with the function. Now, in order for the graph to be complete, we need to have we need for that graph to have the minimum and maximum points. There are the high points and the low points that are on the graph. Uh, we need to have the x and y intercepts on there, wh where the graph crosses the x-axis and the y-axis, and also the the general shape of the graph. Right? Um, you know, if if we're seeing this part of a graph here. Um, that's fine as long as the graph continues to do this, but if, if it, it goes up like this later on and comes back down again and that's not indicated on the graph we're looking at, then we don't really have a complete graph that we're looking at. Um, so it's important to know, like, especially if you're using a graphing calculator or like an online graphing, thing, graphing device um, to, to draw the graph of a function, it's important to know, are you looking at the entire graph or just like a small part of it? All right. Um, so if we want to you know, use a graph to, to find values of a function, um, the, the, way, the way we read the graph is basically <clears throat> by, if I want to find the value of a function, let's so like what's f of one? Um, well, that f of one, the one refers to my x value. f of one is the y coordinate of, that, of the point where x is equal to one. Um, so if you're, if you're trying to read a graph to, to get information about the function, to get the input and output values, remember for, for any given point on the graph, you know, the x coordinate of that point represents the input value. The y coordinate of that point represents your output value that corresponds to that input. All right, so that's what we're going to do in this example here. Uh, we have a graph of a function t, which gives the temperature between noon and 6 p.m. at some weather station. All right, and so you can see, you know, the temperature goes up and then it kind of goes back down again as the day goes on. Um, so part A of this example asks us to find t of 1, t of 3, t of 5. All right, so to find t of 1, uh, remember, when we're evaluating a function, and that's what we're doing here, is we're evaluating this function, but using the graph instead of using uh, the, the definition of the function. Right? I, I did another video about evaluating functions where it was like f of x equals whatever, 4x squared minus 2x plus 3 or something like that. And to find f of 1, you, you put that 1 in place of the x and you do the calculations. We can't do that here because we don't know what that function t is. We don't know like the equation for that function. So if I want to evaluate the function, I can use the graph to do that. All right? To find t of 1, remember the number in the parentheses is your input, your x coordinate. So I go to where x equals 1, and I find that point on the graph where x equals 1, which is this point right here that I just kind of made a little darker there. And then the value of t of 1 is the y coordinate of that point. All right? And at x equals 1, it looks like my y coordinate is 25. So t of 1 equals 25, right? So in other words, it, you know, for this example, at 1 p.m., the temperature was 25 degrees Fahrenheit, All right? What about t of 3? Well, to do t of 3, I do a similar thing. I go to x equals 3. Again, the number in the parentheses is your x coordinate. So I go to x equals 3. I kind of take that up to the graph. And when you're doing this, you don't have to draw little dots on there. Um, I'm doing that just so hopefully you all, you all can see what's going on. So 3 up to here, my y coordinate is here, which is looks like a y coordinate of 30, right? So t of 3 is equal to 30, right? t of 5, right? So the number in the parentheses is my x coordinate. So at x equals 5, I go up to the graph, which is here. I look for my y coordinate, which looks like it's 20. So t of 5 equals 20, right? So that's how you can evaluate a function given a graph. You know, they give you the x value here. Find that x value. Where's the point on the graph? Figure out the, the y value. That y value is the value of the function, right? That's the output value at whatever the x value is that you're looking at. All right, so that's evaluating that function. Part B asks us, which is larger, t of 2 or t of 4? Well, t of 2 is the y coordinate of this point. t of 4 is the y coordinate of this point here. And just by looking at them, t of 2 is bigger, right? Because t of 2 is higher on the graph than t of 4 is. Right, so I don't even have to get the exact numbers for this. If I wanted to, t of 2 looks like it's about 35, 36 degrees. t of 4 looks like it's maybe about 25. Right, but just by looking at the graph, whichever point is higher on the graph, that is the, the larger value of the function. Right, so 
It's not just looking at the two and the four. It's looking at the y coordinates, you know, the output values for those inputs of two and four. All right. In this case, t of two is larger because it's higher on the graph than t of four, which has the y value down here. All right. Part C asks us to find the x values for which t of x equals 25. All right. So similar to what we did in part A, but different. Now they're giving us the output value of 25, and I want to know, well, what input, what x values are going to give me that output of 25? So I can approach it the same way, just kind of backwards of what I did before here. I know that the y coordinate is going to be 25. Right? Remember, the y coordinates represent the outputs. So I draw that dotted, dotted line across at 25. All right, there's my line at 25. So where does that graph hit 25? Well, it's here at x equals 1. And then over here again at x equals 4. Right, so I get t of x equals 25 when x equals 1 or x equals 4. Right, so in this case, if they give you the y coordinate or the output value, you can draw the line horizontally from that y value of 25 across to the graph. And everywhere that graph hits that value, right, whatever that x coordinate is where the graph touches that value, that's what's going to give you the output of 25. All right, so the temperature was 25 degrees at 1 p.m. and then again at 4 p.m., you know, once on the way up as the temperature was rising, and then again on the way down when the temperature was dropping at the end of the day. All right? So that's finding, given an output value, you know, finding the input value that corresponds to it. And then part D, the net change, or, or we're asked to find the net change in temperature from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Right? So net change is just how much did the temperature change, or what was the temperature at 1, what was the temperature at 3, what's the difference between those two? It's not necessarily how much did the temperature actually change, but just what's the difference from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m.? What's the difference in temperatures? Right, so at 1 p.m., as we saw up here in part A, T of 1 was equal to 25. All right, so that was 25 degrees. At 3 p.m., T of 3 was 30. All right, so at 1 p.m. it was 25 degrees. At 3 p.m. it was 30 degrees. So the net change is going to be T of 3 minus T of 1. Right, it's always the later time minus the earlier time. So t of 3 minus t of 1 is 30 minus 25, which is going to be a net change of 5 degrees Fahrenheit between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Now, did the temperature only change 5 degrees between 1 and 3? If you look at the graph, it didn't, right? At 1 p.m. it was 25. By 2 p.m. it was up to like 35. And then by 3 it was back down to 30. So it actually went up about 10 degrees, and then it dropped down 5 degrees, right? But the net change doesn't care about what happened in between. It's just between 1 and 3, what's the difference in the temperature? It's a difference of 5 degrees. That's your net change. All right? So that is you know, getting some information from the graph of a function, uh, evaluating a function um, from a graph. Um, just you know, remember, the, the key thing is the, you know, the, the input values are your x's. The y values are your outputs that correspond to those x's. So if I want to find t of 3, I go to x equals 3 and find the y coordinate of that point on the graph. That gives me the output for t equals 3. <clears throat>